All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the sixth session of Star Trek October, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. Uh, if you're new here, uh, we are a game that is set in the year 2414 aboard a specialized starbase in the Sabine Expanse. Now, this is in the same canon, quote unquote, as my Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers games, but you don't need to have watched any of those to enjoy October. If you are interested in playing catch up, though, you can find the VODs on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like iTunes and Spotify. Uh, as is sort of the general sort of announcement from now until uh, November, uh, is that I'm still doing Extra Life. And uh, I guess for September especially, 25% uh, of my bits and subs are going right to the cause. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, link should be below the stream. Uh, but with that said, let's just have everyone go around and introduce themselves, starting with Dag. Hey everybody, I'm Dag. I am playing Captain Ibsen Kijwick, cool as Zaldin, this side of the neutral zone. Uh, this is going to be a great episode tonight, and if you want to talk about it, you can find me at Shrek Nexus on Twitter. Uh, John here out of Seattle playing uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Jaro Terrell, uh, the pilot. Uh, and yeah. That's about it. Uh, Matthew, I play uh, Lieutenant Jana, the Education Chief Engineer of the Starship and Deep Space October. Um, hey guys, I'm <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Keev Dottig, the Telerite Chief Medical Officer of DSO, and uh, Lieutenant Dorset, the Operations Officer. And I'm Watney. I play the Empathic Chief of Security, Lieutenant Commander Stetko. Very nice. And with that, let's go ahead and run the introduction. I'm, I'm going to make the mistake of saying his last name's not Connor. <laughs> <laughs> and as the rest of Twitch is thoroughly confused why we're talking about Terminator. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So again, We're doing a new... crossover? Oh, no. <laughs> that would be oh, no. There you go. That's, that's what happens as Skynet gets a hold of the uh, Enterprise A, and it just goes around the sun, and that's how we get term. Okay, we're getting into the weeds. Sorry. This is how the Borg, this is how the Borg happened. Oh, God. Oh, oh boy. All right, so something we uh, something we do here is uh, we have an opening log, and today, uh, Captain Kiswick, I believe you have that honor. I'm not on mute. Captain's log, start eight nine one nine eight two mark one. Starfleet has ordered How to engage a second contact mission with the Vedas homeworld, a Class L planet in a sector close to the station. Our mission is to negotiate for access to a rare compound that can treat a human neurological disorder known as something else. Bah, a bad human neurological disorder. While Dr. Data will be determining the efficacy of this compound's medical applications, I will be looking forward to engaging the Vedas directly. Captain Boimler's first contact reports suggest that Vedas are robust people. Their adults, at a minimum, are taller than any Klingon or Orion, and they average over three meters tall. More exciting is that they are one of the few species who embrace directness and abject honesty as severely as Zaldans or Tellarites. It will be refreshing to engage them diplomatically. 
Getting by on their world means special measures must be taken to protect us from their atmosphere. Class L atmospheres have more CO2 than my crew can comfortably handle. While Datig prepares, prepares trioxin and backup masks, Lieutenant Jana is retrofitting a shuttle so that it can endure the trip down. While I've briefed the team to be as honest as possible if approached by a Vedas representative, I would like to limit the prospect of an incident. That being said, I'm meeting with Dr. Dodding to get a better sense of what we can expect on the surface. Seems like it'll be a run of the mill mission, which is nice for once and luck. All right, so we start our first scene right with that uh, meeting between Dottig and Kijwick. Uh, of course, you are within the ready room of the How, where this is taking place, and the How is already underway. So let's take it from there. How many Triox packs did you say you had? I can synthesize as many as we need, but on hand, I've got about two dozen. That should be enough for this trip. More than sufficient. We should make sure that everybody has two or three in a pack just to make sure. Mm -hmm. I'd also and recommend then, that we carry backup rebreathers. I was just going to suggest that. What are your thoughts on this kind of environment on the, the, the skin of our OA mission? Well, the people go, going down. I mean, are you worried about a um, little impromptu exfoliation? Would you like me to prescribe you a soothing analgesic for your little boo-boos that you're going to get from the sand? Oh, it's so coarse. That might actually be a good idea. I, yes, I actually wasn't kidding. I think everybody should bring some. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I am from an archipelago world, we can be more sensitive to heightened levels of carbon within non-aquatic atmospheres. You know, you expended a lot of atmosphere just to say we're big babies. Do you have something to say, Captain? No, I need to let go of my desk first. <laughs> your, your knuckles were turning white. You know, I hope your hair falls out someday. Is that really the best you can do? Come on, I come in here and I bring my A game every day. And you got to you get buttoned down. You're like brass now. Doc, I gotta let you win some of the fights. Would you <clears throat> what is the saying? Well, would you rather if it became violent? I mean, I'm not down. I, I'm, I'm always down for a little fisticuffs, but no. Uh, this fourth pit means I got to look good on camera. But we could That's go with... We, no, there's there's actually there's a really great holodeck program I have on the station if you want to do some, uh, you know, bare knuckle brawling with the safety's <laughs> off. I mean, I never assault senior citizens. I actually accept that one. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah, thank you. I, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Um, listen, Captain. Do we have any more information about this uh, potential treatment for Forrester Trent syndrome? Uh, no, that's what uh, you're going to be on the away mission for, is I need you to analyze the compound. This is notes were not specific. It's extremely exciting. Um, medical science with an eye to treatment of this disease hasn't progressed much in the past 40 years. We're still prescribing the same neurostabilization regimen, and the success rate is still under 90%. This could change lives for many people. One of the many reasons we're looking to incorporate the Vedas into the Federation as soon as possible. Or, I mean, just get them to sign over access to their resources. That would also work. I mean, we'll get there when we get there. It's a second contact. I don't think exclusive contracts are in the deal at the moment. We just need to get access to some of this compound to determine if it's a good enough treatment. 
even if I can get get a sample, we may be able to replicate it and not need to bring them into the Federation at all. Let's hope it can be replicated. Another thing, they wear these mechanized suits uh, in this environment, uh, which means that they may not be native to it. That's something that I've been considering. It's maybe as our uh, diplomatic liaison, you can suss that out. I might rather not go around scanning them uh, well, without their permission. It, it, it may definitely be worthwhile to get a copy of their physiological database for you. I, okay, case, I, I wouldn't say no. In case any of them have to come up to the ship for any reason, it would be nice to be able to prepare the environmental systems to support them. Well, I mean, you know, it's uh, class L, so we just make it uh, really dry and really hot and um, just uh, unpleasant being. And then I'm sure they'll feel right at home. Well, that's all I had for this briefing, Doctor. Very good. I'll be in sick bay. If you need anything or, you know, just want to vent. You seem stressed. I haven't been on a second contact mission in 30 years as part of Starfleet, so it is kind of getting under my gills. It's like riding a bicycle. You never forget. Have you ever ridden a bicycle? Do they have bicycles on your little... Or what would it be? Like a, uh, some kind of jet ski? Have you ever tried riding a bicycle underwater? Have you? Why would I do that? Why would I? That's why I'm asking you. Just wondering how long it takes, you know, a few cubic liters of salt water to dry out of that hair of yours. Oh, you get the salt water in there, I can't do a thing with it. It's all over at that point. No, I have never ridden a bicycle at all. They don't really make handles that accommodate Zaldin physiology very well. Really, that little, the little webbing prevents you from grasping a, a rudimentary handle. Like, no. Did your people be... not even discover like uh, fulcrums and levers? You couldn't do that because you, because oh my, my webs on my hand, it hurts. You should leave before I order you to take your next vacation on Zald. Challenge accepted. And then Dati will turn to leave. All right, I love it. All right, we're gonna move actually right onto the bridge as Dottig sort of goes out into the bridge and you can maybe say a few things, but you're basically going to the turbo lift. As uh, Stetko and Terrell, you guys are having a uh, discussion about, uh, well, how fast you're going right now. Uh, looks like speeds are nominal. You're muted, John. Yeah, but we could be going so much faster. Well, uh, what's the ETA? Uh, about two hours longer than it should be. Well, uh, what can you do to make it go faster? Uh, you know, I mean, you know, this whole area is pretty civil. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, reroute a little bit of energy from the phasers into the engines no literally anywhere else what you could, say, you could take power from the science labs we're definitely not using those i don't think the doctor would even step in that science lab <laughs> yeah but the phasers draw the most power it's the quickest return on on the work invested in rerouting power it's easy to reroute power and exactly if you combine okay 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 See, if you combine exactly. the we labs could reroute we could reroute back to phasers in no time i'm so glad you proved my point for me it's no, so easy to reroute right. power we are on the edge of federation territory barely we are not reducing tactical power period we'd, we'd still have 
torpedoes and most of most of Starfleet is all about torpedoes anyway. How many times have you seen a good phaser fight? Never. It's fire torpedoes full spread. Every single time. It's like that's all we want to do is kill it with a big old <laughs> rock. Look, um, I can't deny Oh, sorry. That. <laughs> And I guess right at this point, this is where Dottie will be walking across and says, well, you know, Commander Stetko, the HAL has an independent phaser power supply. It probably wouldn't be that difficult to siphon some power off of it. Yep. See, even the Ewok agrees. It's the what now? Nothing. Okay. But uh, for what it's worth, you can have the power from the science lab. I'm never going to use the thing. And All right. he's going <laughs> to... <laughs> Um. Yeah. Speaking of which, Doctor, how's the medical bay here? I haven't even been in there. How's the sick bay? Oh well. To be honest, it's a little substandard. Not quite a state of the art, right? Well, I mean, you can't even adjust the height of the bio beds. I need a, uh, I need a little uh, stool to stand up on to get at the bio beds because you know they built them for humans not for tellerites so and as he goes into the turbo left and says sick bases oh god oh lords forbid they would ever build something with anybody but humans in mind <laughs> Carell's gonna try to redirect the uh the turbo lift to engineering that oh, okay <laughs> uh control security difficulty of one just, if you just roll a complication, fun. I'm just going to say, my God. <laughs> Deco is going to like look suspiciously at him. Like she thinks he might be doing it anyway. And she's going to go over and like stand over his shoulder. All right. He's, he's not making any, uh, he's not really trying to uh, hide what he's doing uh, from Stetco. He thinks she might even find it funny. Okay. All right, two successes. That means you're up to one momentum. And yeah, Date, about 30 seconds later, you step into main engineering. This isn't uh, my sick bay. Uh, no, sir. Uh, and Jana would put down the tools that he's working on in engineering. Um, are you? Are you? Are you okay? I mean, what's that supposed to mean? Well, you just walked into engineering thinking it was sick bay. So right. I'm not like a, a medical doctor, so I don't know what that means or what kind of dementia might be setting in. Every but, uh, day that I wake up, I thank whatever powers may be that you are not a medical doctor. But oh, I, I stepped into your little tube elevator and I said sick bay, and yet I am not in sick bay. So to me, that sounds like an engineering problem. Not the problem with my cognition. Yeah, how are those uh, remedial engineering courses going, Doctor? I mean, are you are you really fit to diagnose something like that? Oh, that's low. Well, you know, it might be a low blow, but who who am I to say? I mean, I I, I could tell. I mean, what did I get? Like a D plus plus in your class? So I I, I can't. I, what what is a hand? What's a foot? I don't know anatomy. You know what? I'm going to take a Jeffrey's tube to sick bay. I think you're overworking yourself and you need a little bit of R&R. &R. That's, that's very considerate of you. Again, that, that offer of joining me in the holodeck for that rock climbing program is still open. I just, <laughs> we just, but we've been over this. We have transporters. I don't have to climb the rock to get to the top of the hill. I can just beam myself up there or I can take a shuttle. Yeah, uh, you're going into the Jeffrey's tube right now, so maybe that rock climbing program would have prepared you for that. <laughs> Jaro is actually streaming the audio from engineering because he knew it was going to be priceless. So I don't know how Stet goes taking to that. Oh, she's like, so her hands on like the back of the chair, and then she like elbows at me. She's like, "This is great." <laughs> See, you know, you don't have to always be a hundred percent by the rules. Yeah, but we're not diverting power from tactical. Just combine like science labs, astro navigation, life support, I mean transporters, um, all of those other auxiliary systems. You should be fine. Very well. 
he starts rerouting. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a control and an engineering difficulty of one. Hold on. Let me read that real quick. <laughs> what does the NSAP potential do? What do I have to spend again? Do I have to give uh, you You have to do one momentum. All right. So I am going to do the mo I am going to spend the momentum so that I can potentially get the untapped potential added okay. bonus. I don't oh. think we have any momentum actually. So. You, you had one. You had one. Yeah, we had one. All right. So four successes means you have three momentum, four momentum from your untapped potential. Very nice. And yeah, sure enough, uh, you managed to reroute some power away uh, from those non-essential systems and pump it into the engines and you go from something like warp 8 to warp 8.5 so you're going a little bit faster would i so, detect that oh yeah jana you would see this you would okay. see someone on the bridge doing this your uh your warp cord is uh strobing very fast uh i don't like the look of that um just, just Doc, go go do your calisthenics there in the Jeffrey's tubes, and uh, I'll I'll handle whatever this is. Yeah, I'm going to do it, but not because you said so. No, you're doing it because it's the healthy life choice. <laughs> wow, just <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, I will quickly check where the power is being drained from and what's uh, causing the extra draw on the warp core. All right, uh, insight engineering difficulty of one. And I'm going to assume my uh, my power systems focus applies. Oh yes, most definitely. We've come All right, full two successes, which means you're now up to five momentum. Yeah, you could tell it's pretty much everything that isn't being in use right now. So the science labs, the transporters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. Uh, Lieutenant John at a bridge. I'm getting a strange power draw from across. Well, almost all the systems on the ship. What uh, what's going on? I was wondering when you noticed that. Uh, <clears throat> class move sending dot tank through the through the Jeffries tube, by the way. That's awesome. Um we're, we're just uh upping the uh upping the velocity. That's all. Are are you are you watching me right now? Uh no, I was just listening. Not anymore. Okay, that's that's a little creepy and voyeuristic. So um maybe yeah, it is. don't <laughs> okay, just one sec one second. Um Lieutenant Jana to uh Chief Stetko. This is Stecco. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't want to tell you how to do your job or anything. I mean, that I, I just, with all due respect, um, isn't it against the Starfleet regulations for people to be like monitoring other officers? So I, I think you might want to just have a, a talk with Jaro. Uh, Jaro leads I'm back. She it's was listening. <laughs> Are you saying that it's against security's orders and direction to monitor going ons on a starship? Uh, I think without due cause, yes. Not for just, you know, monitoring. You, you, the way you said that was incredibly disturbing to me and really kind of <laughs> creepy. And now my hair is standing on end. So I tell you what, you... Uh, you just you go back to your job. That's fine. Um, I'm, I'm not going to complain because you're, you're, you're actually really kind of frightening to me. But um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to try to make sure that the warp core doesn't blow up because Jaro's drawing too much power. He's what? Um, you don't know about that? Or... Um, <laughs> He's not drawing power that's being diverted to tactical, is he? Or wait, someone said that's an independent system. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so that would actually be incredibly, incredibly difficult, if not, well, insane, because you'd have to create an entirely new series of EPS conduit rewrotes, and I, those would be prone to blowing up. Right. Um, yeah, just make sure the warp core doesn't blow up before we get there. That's kind of my job. You know, that it's how engineers 
function. We, we save your lives every single day by just performing routine maintenance on the millions of different systems that could kill you or result in you dying by being blown out into space or the like. So yes, I'm just going to keep saving your life as I do. You're a, you're a goddamn hero. We're the unsung heroes. Yes. We miracle working every single day. And because I find this a very funny moment to intrude, the ship immediately goes to red alert and Kijwick, you get called to the bridge right as on the main view screen of the how, uh, what you see is, uh, a giant subspace shockwave headed in your direction. So if you remember, uh, Praxis blowing up, yep, you got another Praxis scenario on your hand. Oh, this is not cute. Terrell, take us out of warp. Evasive maneuvers. Yes, sir. Stecco, uh, shields up. Hi. And uh, Terrell's going to, uh, he's going to do what he refers to as the hang 10 maneuver. And he's mm -hmm. going to try to ride the wave for a little bit to uh, lessen the impact on the ship. This is Commander Kijwick to all hands. Brace for impact. I repeat, brace for impact. All right. So uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna give you guys an option here, um, mostly because I'm having difficulty figuring how to combine them in a good way. So the how as an entity can do one action here. So you can, for example, Terrell, you could steer into the wave, and that would be your action. Or Stetko, what you can do is overload and modulate the shields, and that would be the how's action. Um, the reason I say this is because. It will be at a difficulty five, no matter what you do, but you can still help each other and the how can assist you as well. So, okay, what's the team? What's the benefits of each? I'm telling you, we can, we can ride it. We can ride it. We can ride the wave. We'll have very little impact to the systems. It'll minimize the potential damage that we have to deal with in engineering. If we, power up the shields we could have potential over overflows in all the capacitors and blow out so many more systems the best the best course of action is just to go with it clock is ticking wave is getting closer um Proved. terrell turn us into the wave terrell uh dances across the uh the panel all right, so you are going to be doing a daring and a con. The how will assist you with a structure con. And Kijwick, since you gave him a direct order, uh, you will assist with a presence command. This is, again, a difficulty of five. <clears throat> so going to use determination for something to prove. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing with uh, Risk as part of the game. Uh, as an assist, you can't actually use oh, determination. Oh, right, right, right. You could give him his your determination if you wish. Um, after he's rolled, if he gets some complications, he could re-roll those dice. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be on a standby to do that for sure. All righty. And then I will use um, how much momentum? So yeah, five at the moment. <laughs> how much would it take to get the four dice? Four dice would cost three. With determination spend. Oh, with determination, it would cost all five. All right, there you go. You got all five. And it was uh, daring control uh, con. Yep. Okay. Daring con. Four dice. Um. And I make a case for astro navigation as a focus here. Yeah, for, to you. for Kijwick's assist. In that, and, that applies. And give us back two of the momentum and give yourself two threat instead. Otherwise, I don't get to use bold con. Ooh, there you go. I only roll one, right? Correct. And it was engines and what for the ship? If that's uh, the structure and con for the ship. All right, so Terrell has five, six successes. Let's see what, uh, see what the ship rolls. All right, so you're up to seven successes. And I'm gonna re-roll one of the failures, just okay. because Terrell wants, you know, if it's complication, it's a complication. He's a risk taker. I can see that. 
All right, so still no help there. So yeah, <laughs> go ahead and roll your untapped potential because uh, right now you would be at four momentum overall. All right, I get more threat. Mm -hmm. So uh, we sort of see an external shot of the Centaur class that is the USS Howe turning into this great advancing purple shockwave uh, that is approaching at superluminal speeds. And as the Howe sort of turns into the wave, the wave slams into the how and causes everyone to lose their seating. I mean, unless you had seatbelts on, in which case, go ahead. Uh, those of you in Jeffrey's tubes get thrown about like a kid shaking a, some sort of object that I can't think of right now. Uh, Jana, you in engineering, since you're not in a chair, you pretty much go against a bulkhead. You know, it's it's the elevator ride or roller coaster ride from hell. And on top of it all, um, several things are going to happen. Uh, immediately, Jana, you look over at the warp core and you see that the dilithium containment chamber is beginning to literally crack as the pressures of the storm and the inertial dampeners are overloading to the point that it can't keep up. And to make things even worse, Datig, you're still being thrown around probably about 10 feet ahead of you. A bulkhead literally blows out to the emptiness of space. Oh, good. Oh, and uh, you guys on the bridge? Let's just say that there's not Talarian hook spiders in them ceilings. But there's definitely regulation rocks up there. So I'm going to be rolling three challenge die to see how you on the bridge fare. All right, well, Terrell, you are hit by regulation rocks in the ceiling, and you are considered to be lethally injured until the end of this scene until somebody performs first aid on you. You can still talk and whatever, just flavor appropriately. But uh, the good news is that after all this happens, and we'll get to Dottig in a moment, after all this happens, the how is left mostly intact on the other side of the wave. But I think we need to deal with Dr. Dottig first. Hey. So we go to the Jeffrey's tubes, where, uh, yeah, Dottig, the air is rushing past you in a rapid rate. The emergency bulkheads have not triggered, which means you're in big trouble. Yep. Um, okay. Got to think fast here. So I think what uh, Dr. Dottig is going to do um, is... Oh, God. This is going to be bad. Uh, he's going to try to get into a... a um, a junction? Perpendicular junction. Uh, just sort of pull himself in there and see if he can't use the uh, the manual lever to close the hatch on that Jeffrey Stu. I gotcha, I gotcha. Let's have that be a fitness and a con difficulty of three. Hmm. Okay. And let's see, how are we doing for momentum? I'm going to go ahead and spend... Fitness and con is not great for me. Thanks, John. Spend all three. Um, I'm going to spend, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and spend three. No, I'm not. Actually, I'm going to Dottig's uh, determination. Okay. And um, let's see. We're going to use his value risk as our business mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, automatic two successes. And I believe then if I buy an additional die, it would be two. Correct. Okay, and I'll buy an additional die, and we'll. Alrighty. I would recommend not rolling a complication. Um. Well, I'm gonna oh, try. Please. Fitness. Con. Uh, okay. Survey Focus. says. All right. Hey, that's uh, four successes, which means you get a momentum right back. So, Dottig, yeah, you, using your massive, quote-unquote, Tellarite strength, you literally sort of dig into the grates of the Jeffrey's tubes and just pull yourself along as the wind rips through your hair. And you manage to get into a perpendicular junction, uh, break open the manual release box, and pull the lever just before uh, emergency bulkheads... Uh, would seal normally, so you you basically perform the manual emergency bulkhead. However, I'm also going to spend two threat to create the complication that when you sort of maybe breathe a sigh of relief, you look around, 
every other entrance to this junction has been sealed by emergency bulkheads. I'm just going to tap on his comm badge. Uh, Dotting the bridge. And nobody comes through. And Done. that's where we're actually going to cut to the bridge first to deal with Terrell. And where's the bridge? Where's the bridge? There's the bridge. So yeah, all of you on your on the floor, all of you are picking yourselves up. Terrell doesn't look too hot. Oh no. Um so Stecco will ensure that the shield integrity is there for mm -hmm. now. Um, I guess she'll at, at first just get a glance of the readouts. Okay, well, I actually have a handout for you then. Uh, there you go. You should now have a handout entitled Subspace Shockwave Damage. Okay. And now's the part where we all look at Watney as she reacts to it in real time. <laughs> uh, I figure while Stetko is taking that moment to get the readouts, Kijwick would assess the status of the crew uh, on the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, notice that Jaro is down and not getting back up into the chair and he'll run over to Jaro. Okay. <clears throat> Lieutenant, are you okay? Uh, oh, you know, I'll be, I'll be fine, coach. Um, you know, just put me back in. I, I think you should stay there for a second. Kijwick to medical. I have a medical emergency on the bridge. Nothing. Kishwick to comms are down. <clears throat> and Our main Kishwick. computer is down. Stetco reports. Great. Uh, d everything's bad, sir. We don't have internal comms that, well, maybe they're at. I can't get retails from anybody. I haven't heard from any department heads. Uh, main and secondary power is offline. It looks like our and John, I might be able to tell you more, sir, but it looks like our dilithium crystals have cracked. Um, get started on restoring internal communications uh, and seeing if we can send an emergency SOS to the nearest Starfleet vessel. Our, our subspace relays have been fried, sir. Well, now I know. Jaro, I need you to lay there for a minute and... Uh, Kiswick is going to run over to the uh, emergency first aid kit. Stetco, I think you know how to do this better than I do. Sure thing, sir. She'll, um, I guess. You basically trade help. places. Yeah, trade places. All right. So I'll give Dag access to this handout as well. Okay. And yeah, Watney, uh, I need you to roll me a control and a medicine, please, at a difficulty of a two. But because I find it funny, and also because I think it actually could lead to some good role play, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend some threat. I'm going to make it a difficulty three, and I'm going to increase the complication range to 18 to 20. Okay. Um... Uh, how bad? How bad is it? Uh, she has no bedside manner. She's like, it's pretty bad. Um... So I don't have any like medical focuses. Unfortunately, it does not seem to be the case. So um if what 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 happens if I tap a value? That would be your determination. If I tap the value, a star base is a home, a crew is a family. Allow it, yeah. That'll give okay. you two free successes to start with. Great. So um, I guess I'll just roll the regular two. Okay. Ooh, and one of those is a complication. Great. So, so funny. <laughs> here's what's going to happen. Like, Terrell, you're not going to die, but something's going to happen. I'll roll for it in a moment. So, Stecco, you run your tricorder over Terrell to see how bad the damage is. And it's not good. Uh, his shoulder, right shoulder, has been dislocated. Uh, he's got a hairline fracture of his femur, which if you've never had a hairline fracture on a femur before, 
it is one of the most painful fractures out there. Like, it will put anyone down. Um, and uh, to boot, uh, Terrell has a concussion. Pretty major one at that. So part of your task is you see all this, you start treating what the tricorder tells you is the most important, which is the concussion to start with. So you're able to stop the bleeding in the brain, and you're able to stop the deleterious effects of the concussion. However, when it comes to the femur, when it comes to the shoulder, the complication here is that you make one of those worse, and I need you to decide for me, Terrell, which of those you would want to be worse. Oh, God. Um, ah, the leg. Okay, so yeah. Terrell, if you were at a 10, of like on a 1 to 10 scale of pain, if you were at a 10 before, you're now at about a 12 because your femur has literally been broken into two pieces. Oh, no. Um, he is doing his best not to scream. Uh, mm -hmm. so he's probably, uh, he's probably currently bleeding from the mouth as he is biting his lip. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, not very good at this, are you? <laughs> I'm... A security chief, not a doctor. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> um, so she doesn't have like a bunch of trainings, but she'll try and like put pressure. He's not bleeding, right? But... I mean, he's bleeding from the mouth because he's biting his lip, but even the tricorder tells you he is in immense pain. Okay, so she's going to try and just like, I guess like put pressure on his shoulder in a way that supports it. Mm -hmm. And well, let me ask this. Would you, I mean, it's just dislocated. You could just pop it back into its socket if you wanted to. Uh, Jaro, I'm going to have to try and relocate your shoulder. Hey, hold on one. Hold on just one second. You know, security. Why am I still conscious? Put me asleep. <laughs> So she's gonna just try and reset it. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, so Terrell, if you were at a 12 before, you're now at like a 16. But hey, your shoulder works now, so there's that. That's right about then, Stetco, that the tricoder reports that if you apply a dose of morphine and anesthesine, you can. Uh, well, take that 15 or 16 down to like a seven. Okay, so she's going to look around the bridge for any emergency supplies of medicine. Oh, I mean, this be. is part of the emergency kit that uh, Kishwick handed you. Oh, great. Um, she's going to like look for the correct label and then uh, right in his arm. Okay. Terrell, the pain lessons. You are still in pain, but not excruciating pain. But now we're going to go to Kiswick as all that's going on. Kiswick, I assume by now you've read the handout. Yep. What's the captain going to do about it? <clears throat> we need to find a way to get to one of the shuttles. It's going to have communications that we can use to contact Starfleet, send out an SOS. Uh, the Jeffries tubes are probably going to be our only way to do that. We need to get someone from medical up here to take care of Jaro. Uh, I don't see anything in these details about the transporters being out. Are the transporter sensors still operational? Um, I rerouted system. Rerouted power. You know how to put put it back, right? Yeah. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, I have my doubts, sir. Well. I'm a little worried about rerouting power if the dilithium crystals are cracked. I need mm. Jonna to tell me whether or not that's going to be a safe maneuver. Because if any of the EPS relays are out between here and where I need them to be, that could cause a surge somewhere. We don't mm -hmm. need that. Can Charo <clears throat> crunch the theory? 
What do you mean? Uh, can he think of the probabilities involved in this? Um, what kind of issues the captain could run into? I would say that without a role, you can think of about a dozen ways about how things could go bad right now. Well, there's, there's a lot of possible problems, Captain. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. What I need you to do is I need you to just lay there for now and try not to move because your leg's not supposed to bend like that, even for your species. Uh-huh. And because we have a third scene we need to take care of, we move to engineering. And Jana, uh, you should now have access to that very same handout. Okay. And uh, as, uh, as you're reading that handout, uh, I'll sort of describe and fill time. So the, as I said before, the dilithium containment chamber, it's definitely seen better days. Like this is an old ship already like 50 years old and the what it just went through this is the sort of thing that you retire ships for um but your engineering teams are beginning to report in uh in fact because i find it interesting one of those people is mr dorset and uh, dorset feel free to make up any problems you want you're yeah, muted you I'm the Dag Now Man. <laughs> so, uh, Lieutenant Jana, I, I don't see how we can get this thing operational without space dock. Uh, even then, the ship is... I think she's on her last legs. Uh, you, you take a horse and put her down at this point. Well, that may be, sir, but uh, we're a long way from the pasture out here. Yeah, I mean, the computer core is completely down. We'd need a week just to get that back online. Uh, well, we've got bigger problems. We can't even, I mean, normally a fractured dilithium crystal wouldn't be an issue, but the recompositor is completely blown. How is the magnetic containment field holding for the antimatter? Stable at 23%. Yeah, that's like 77% less than I'm comfortable with. Uh, uh, although it is 2% uh, higher than um, the critical stage. So there is that silver linings. Well, you'll, you'll look for what you can get. Um, casualty reports from the engineering staff? Uh, we've got at least seven. Okay. Uh, anyone with basic medical training should attend to them now. Uh, do a a review of the skills of the remaining engineering staff, see if there's anyone that could help them. And get, I don't know, the most fit person that we have in engineering. I want him up on the bridge. Get a runner going back to the bridge. We need to find out if anyone's actually still alive up there and what they want us to do. Um, Hi, Lieutenant. Yes, Lieutenant. I thought you were going to say something. I'm sorry. <laughs> And also, I'm not sure, should I be calling you sir in this moment? Because you're a technically a full lieutenant. And even though I'm in charge of you, because I'm, that's probably not the question I should be asking right now. No, I'm, listen, Jana. All right, listen, this is engineering. You're the chief of engineering. Here, I listen to you. Okay. You can do this. I feel like somebody out there is just not being supportive, but I appreciate yours. Um, okay. Uh, main shuttle bay. We need to get a crew down there. We might be able to access the long range communication systems on one of the shuttlecraft. Try to get tricorders, expand their sensor radius so that we can detect anything along the hallways. Uh, maybe even we should do that. I mean, we can, we can do one better if we can manage to launch one of the shuttles we can use the shuttle's external sensors to get more accurate readings of the damage on the ship hmm. true but that means we have to get to the shuttle bay first well with the uh with the rattle that we just took i can imagine it would be a good bet that we may have some blockages or emergency force fields internal bulkheads i think to plan for a worst case scenario um, GM, would we be able to find yes. environmental containment suits? 
Uh, yeah, I would think the, especially in main engineering, there would be a locker available with at least one or two suits. All right. All right. I think the engineering teams can handle things here for now. Do you, in your more experienced opinion, if not your command opinion, do you think we should be heading down to the shuttle bay to try to access one of those or should we, well, delegate? Well, you know, they, they always say if you want something done right. Yeah, well, I, I want to make sure the ship doesn't blow up. So that, that I want to do right. And also accessing the shuttlecraft and launching one. I want to do that right too. But I can't be in both places at once. I think right now, I'm reasonably certain that the warp core won't breach. Um, and I'm reasonably certain that I can probably hold it together if it tries. Um, but in terms of modifying or launching a shuttlecraft, I mean, I'm, I'm really much better as an assistant in that role. I don't think you should be putting all your eggs in the basket that is me. Lieutenant, you, you need a little bit more self-confidence. So that's, that's really horrifying when that's coming from me. So um, I don't know. Listen, Lieutenant, why don't you go to the, the shuttle bay? I'll hold down the fort here. Um, what I'm good at is logistics. And if I'm in a central location and I can get some runners going to the different sections, I can probably coordinate some basic starship function. Very good, Lieutenant. I, uh, I appreciate your support, and I'm sure that uh, engineering will be in good hands. Try to get the com internal communication systems back, back online. I'd say that's outside of keeping the ship from, well, imploding. Probably your most important task. We need to actually be able to communicate about any further damages or other threats to the ship. Um, I mean, we can... I mean, we can rig a couple of tricorders to serve as relays. If you can manage to get a shuttle into space, the shuttle can act as a sort of bounce off point, a switchboard, if you will, for communication, at least between engineering and the bridge. I could send a runner with a modified tricorder up there right now. Excellent idea. We might actually be able to bring up some kind of rudimentary communication system simply using a kind of Morse code. If I could create a, an inverse tachyon pulse through the use of, well, a jury-rigged communication device and the tricorder, we might be able to just let each other know if there's something terribly, terribly wrong. It that's, wouldn't actually allow us to communicate, but... That's an excellent idea. The, the tachyons would be unaffected by any residual subspace interference from the shockwave. Exactly. Well, let's do it. All right. All right. So we have an option here. Um, you can actually uh, make a roll for it. And to get down to the shuttle bay, that would be probably a fitness and a con because you got to go through the Jeffrey's tubes. Um, or what you can do is you can spend two momentum to create the advantage that uh, you remember that one episode of DS9 where uh, the Defiant was, I believe it was in the Badlands or maybe it was a gas giant. Starship down. Um, yeah, Starship Down. Um, it's one of those things where you have, quote-unquote, nogs running around. I, I would actually suggest that we use both, so that we use the lower decks officers to relay messages while I go down to uh, actually climb down to the shuttle bay. Okay. So, yeah, that's going to be a fitness con for you. Difficulty of two. Now, could I argue that my prehensile tail focus or uh, talent comes into play here? It would help you, so yes. So that's Which an extra I believe, die. die yeah, see, it gives climbing. you a different die. Yeah. So uh, I will buy an extra die as well. Okay. Fitness and con. And it was difficulty three, did you say? Uh, difficulty two. Okay. So I'll roll 40 20 using that extra die, spending two momentum, and an applicable focus of athletics. Yep. All right. So three successes, which means you get a momentum right back. And yeah, Jonna, you're able to get down into the shuttle bay. And as uh, luck would have it, of all the things that are... Oh, let me clear this up. Of all the things that have gone bad, the shuttles are not one of them. 
Uh, apparently they were mag locked to the, the deck plating and uh, the two shuttles that are in here are in good condition. All right, then uh, I would like to enter one of the shuttles and attempt to use its long range communication systems to send out a distress call. Okay. Uh, who are you sending? Is it a general distress call going out in all directions or a directed one? It would be how far away are we at, uh, at maximum warp from, uh, from Deep Space October? Let me put it this way. At warp eight, which is the house maximum, you're about four or five days away. For a ship that can go warp nine and higher, you're maybe more like a day or two, maybe even like 16 hours away if they go really hard against the wall kind of a thing. And the uh, Vedas, they have warp technology, correct? And ships? They do. But um, what I'm going to say is it's right about now that you guys have a network going with the... Sh so you sort of had the runners uh, with the modified tricorders. So you all can talk now. But I would like to go to the bridge um, because I have something for Terrell. So Terrell... The pain, you're able to bear it a little bit better, um, obviously, with the drug flowing through your system. Um, but something's bothering you, Terrell. Um, and feel free to flavor this how you want. Subspace shockwaves like that don't just come out of nowhere. Sir? 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 What is it? That really had a feel of a weapon. Like an isolytic weapon? I don't know, but that was not normal in any in any way. And Just... I I think we need to I think we need to have the doctor give us all like extra basic training on, you know. Stuff. Yeah, I, I got that. I got that much, Jaro. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'll be getting into that. Um, I, I think you're right. Subspace shockwaves aren't don't just come out of anywhere. Uh, cosmic strings, quantum filaments, the Klingons blowing up their moon, isolated weapons, but uh, isolated weapons were outlawed. Uh, I don't think the Vedas have that technology and they're the closest system that we're aware of, unless we're being followed by somebody, but they would have finished us off by now. Uh, as it stands, uh, my first duty is to the ship. I need to make sure that as many people as possible can get us up and running before we can start investigating the source of that. And uh, Terrell, uh, at this point, would you still be on the floor or would you have maybe gotten back into your chair? Oh, he's doing everything he can to get back in the chair. Okay. Say you, you'd be able to do it and maybe it actually takes some of the pressure off your leg. Um, in, it's one of those things where maybe you can actually elevate the leg in such a way. Um, but now that you're back at your console, um, go ahead and roll me a reason and a con. And since we're routing this all through the shuttle, uh, if one of you guys can roll me a d20 for a 9 or lower, uh, the total difficulty here is a 3. Unfortunately, the shuttle does not assist you, but you do have 2 momentum. And I will uh, give you one threat and use 2 momentum. <laughs> Alrighty. Because it's a con maneuver. Uh, do I have a focus? Uh, let's take a look, actually. Because you might. Um, I'll give you Starship Pilot for this one. Alrighty. Oh, God! <laughs> okay. So, that's a complication. Uh, Can we roll that? Well, he does have bolts, so you can reroll that, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So let's try that first. Um, and just uh, just in case he does fail again, Captain, this would be an opportunity to hand over your determination. What's the maneuver? Uh, what do you mean the maneuver? What are you trying to do, John? 
he's just trying to uh, get a you know a sensor reading off of the shuttle, so you okay. know where the shockwave came from. Okay, yeah. If if it's messed up, I'll give you my determination. All right. All right now, does so Kislik just... have Vetra? Yeah. All right. So roll a challenge die while he's uh, re-rolling all those zeros. It's just one. Unfortunately, you do not get your determination back. And while, uh, okay, so interesting, we have four successes. Oh my gosh. But a complication. Okay, so you get a momentum. I don't suppose I get to use my bold again. No, no, unfortunately <laughs> not. So I was originally going to make this a handout, but I think it works better. And you better. also get another threat. <laughs> oh my god, I don't need more threat. Stop using that, Tom, Stop talent, please. giving me threat. <laughs> uh, it's oh. in Jaro's character. <laughs> All right, so here's what happens. So Terrell. Mm -hmm. you've only ever read about this in books and maybe read about this in like edge cases that have been theorized before. Um, but let me ask this. Do you know what the concept of a rogue planet is? Mm -hmm. All right. Now what I want you to do is take that concept of a rogue planet and attach it to a hyper giant star, a hyper giant star that was in the stages of supernovaing. Uh, Captain, I I hate to say this, but I think we just had a rogue supernova. And it may very well just be the drugs. And Kiswick will come over to check the readings. Yeah, you see the same thing. Okay. Well, Knowing what caused it still doesn't help the ship, but if we can keep sensors trained in that area for any aftershocks and get warning throughout the ship, that would be a good priority. Uh, keep it up, Jarl, and Kishwick will, you know, grip his shoulder. In the uh, yeah, other Ron's one. shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say Kishwick would have thought of that, but good one. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the complication, though, is that, Jana on your shuttle, uh, what I'm going to say is you lose thruster power momentarily as Terrell reroutes power to the sensors without telling you. So you're just adrift for a little bit. Jaro. But uh, before we go to break, I do want to go back to a very special character in my heart. At this point, Dotting, hmm. nobody's called you. You haven't been able to get to anyone. None of the manual releases are working. What are you doing in this Jeffrey's Tube Junction? Oh, he's just, he's sitting there. Says, okay. All right. Remember remedial engineering. All right. To override. The emergency lockout voice commands are not recognized. I'm going to have to operate. And he's going to pull an access panel um, off the side of the Jeffrey's tube. And he's going to attempt to um, pop the hatch on, uh, uh, on the Jeffrey's tube that sort of leads away if if mike if this makes any sense it leads mm -hmm. away from the uh from the outer hull like mm -hmm. towards the the center of the ship so you can be reasonably certain in that direction at least there's probably not a hull breach mm -hmm. so uh yeah he's gonna try to bypass the uh, the emergency bulkhead and get it to open so that he can get back into the engineering section all right well that's gonna be a daring and an engineering difficulty of two <laughs> oh boy. um all right. And can I, um, would you allow my talent uh, testing a theory? Uh, because he, you know, he basically. did the manual release earlier. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it to you. Okay. So I'll roll an extra die for, for free. Uh, and let's, let's go. Daring and engineering my. Some of my worst, worst, worst stats. So here, here we go. Uh, 
Survey says. Whew. Hey, look at that. You get your two successes. So, yeah, you are able to finally get one of the emergency bulkheads to recede, and you have a path passageway into the interior of the ship. Excellent. Yeah, he'll begin sort of combat crawling through the Jeffrey's tube uh, towards towards engineering. All righty. And I tell you what, that is where we are going to take our 10 minute break. So stick around, Twitch. We'll be back shortly.
All right, welcome back, and uh, this is definitely going to be a two-part episode, but we'll see how far we get. But uh, if you're just tuning in, basically what's happened is a uh, rogue hypernova has more or less crippled the how, where the characters and the uh, senior staff of the Deep Space October were on a mission of second contact, which might also be in danger. But first things first, uh, the players came up with a rather inventive idea uh, during the break, so we're actually going to sort of play that out. So their idea, and feel free to chip in and correct me if I say anything wrong, uh, their idea is basically the following. Uh, Kiswick will be replacing Jana on the shuttle and using the shuttle as sort of a mobile command center or a temporary command center. And by using these shuttle's transporters, uh, to accomplish this, this also allows Dottig and Terrell to get to sickbay, 
This allows Jana to get back to engineering. And if Statco needs to run anywhere, she can also go where she's needed. Um, but we're going to start with both Terrell and Dottig, both of you beaming into the antiquated, antiquated sickbay at the exact same time. And so Terrell, you knew this was coming. Dottig, you had no idea this transport was coming because you were still crawling through Jeffrey's tubes. Mm -hmm. So let's play it out from there. John, you're muted. Hey, Doc. What the hell just happened? Uh, you know, uh, this isn't engineering. <laughs> All right. Ne never mind that. Um, have you heard? If, is John OK? I, I have no idea. I've just spent the last hour and a half in the Jeffrey's tube behind the emergency bulkheads. All right. Um, what the hell happened to you? You look terrible. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I was, you know, I was going for my best dot tag look. Uh, would you happen to be able to help my leg at all, please? I mean, I could, I'd say that to be a, a Fairly safe bet. Uh, one moment. A simple cursory scan. Uh, your face would indicate that you are in a considerable amount of pain. Yeah, yeah. And for once, it's not from looking at you. Dante, no. if you want to give me a reason, medicine difficulty of one. You know, um, people who talk like that don't get uh, hyposprays of anesthetic. You know, hey, I'm just trying to relate with you. I mean, this is how you talk to everybody, the captain, everybody. Yeah, well, you know, you're not wrong. Um, sorry, Mike, what was that, Jack? Reason medicine, difficulty Reason one. Medicine. Yeah, so if anything, you should think of it as flattery. So you're imitating me is what you are saying. Uh, so, Dottig, no. do you want the good news or the bad news? Give me the bad news first. Bad news. That leg, with the tools you have in this bad sick bay, you pretty much have one of two options. Oh. A, you basically set it and hope time fixes it, which is barbaric. Or set it and forget it. <laughs> or amputate. Yep. Oh! And I'm going to let this entirely be a Dotic Terrell decision. I'm not going to influence this decision in the slightest. This right. wouldn't have happened if you hadn't have rerouted the transporter. <laughs> All right. I've got uh, I've got some bad news for you. But uh, uh. Never deliver bad news on uh, on uh, heightened pain receptors. So I'm just going to give you something for the pain now. He's just going to give him a hyper spray mm -hmm. uh, of a general anesthetic to really help with the pain and, you know, whack the dosage up to like 30 cc's so he just doesn't feel anything. Just uh, so now that we're a little more clear, we need to talk about this leg. Yeah, yeah, my leg. It's, so it's a good leg. Well, um, you see that it's it was a good leg. Um, now it is a very much a bad leg. So we basically have two options. I can keep you off your feet here for, uh, you know, let's say between six and eight weeks. Uh, where you get to lie in bed all day and hang out with me. And the second more preferable option? Well, we're just going to have to just take that leg right off and fit you with the prosthetic. Neither of these options is really, really all that great, Doc. Hey, listen, I have a prosthetic leg. My left leg is prosthetic from the knee down. 
Um, uh-huh. You know, it uh, barely itches me anymore, and it only hurts maybe sixty percent of the time. Oh, that's amazingly reassuring. And I mean, you know, uh, it uh, it's a great place to store things. If you, you know, going on a long trip, you can put some data crystals in there with some uh, old uh, films or books or you know anything like that it's just uh, really if you can stand the uh, the sort of maraca effect that you get when they shake around in there but i'm trying to lighten the mood with humor it doesn't seem to be landing so um i'll just say that uh, prosthetics have really come a long way uh-huh um you know, but uh, if this ship was maybe 15, uh, 16 years younger, I might have a genotronic replicator and I may be able to just clone you a leg. But uh, for what it is right now, um, we can just fit you with a peg, like uh, the old Earth Corsairs, and um, I'll give you an eye patch, even though you don't need one. And uh, you can just pretend you're a pirate. What? what? In all seriousness, though, we do need to do something about this leg. If you, how long do I have to wait if you replace it, GM? What I would say is, if you do go with the amputate option, you don't have anything on the how. You would have to be without that leg until you got back to Deep Space October. Well, I mean, we could uh, could just take it off and I could uh, give you a crutch until we get back to DSO and I can replicate something. Uh, I don't um, I don't bring prosthetic legs with me everywhere I go because I mean who would ever need them normally but hindsight is twenty twenty, and here we are so um, but I can set it the same basic premise uh, we've had to put you on crutches but uh, we'd need at least uh, you know a week or two for the bones to begin knitting together before i would even sanction you to sit up but if you cut it off i can go back to work uh well i mean no i'm relieving you of duty as of right now if I, can, if I can sit, I'll be fine. Uh, well, I mean, you can sit. All right, then fine. You... Do you, all right. What if something else happens? Do you, do you want Stetco to fly the plane? Well, I mean, that all depends on who was flying it when I was in the Jeffrey's tube and the outer hull ruptured and I almost got sucked into space or sorry, okay. blown. Okay. Now, the thing is, the ship's still here. But that wasn't the, that wasn't the premise of my train of thought there. If you were at the helm, then... Maybe, maybe you, I've heard that you're reasonable as an engineer, so maybe you choose a sort of alternative career path here. Maybe this is, uh, you know, as the Tao says, uh, one door must close for another to open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Can I have the leg? (laughs) What? I want to keep the leg. No, you can't keep the leg. As soon as I take it off of you, it becomes medical waste. It gets disposed of. But it's mine. Possession is nine tenths of the law. And when I cut it off, it'll be mine. What are you going to do with it? Dispose of it because it's medical waste. Well, I, I'd like to get it sealed in some si- in some kind of like Lexite and keep it. All right. Well, Dottie's <laughs> going to pull out a pad and he's going to tap out a mandatory consultation with uh, between uh, Terrell and the station's counselor when they get back. So that is uh, d- 
distressing. It's been with me for a really long time, Doc. I'm going to cut away before I die of laughter. <laughs> it's, we're actually going to go to Theater of the Mind this one because it's a uh, conversation between two points of the ship. Um, so, uh, Jana and, uh, Stetko, uh, you all are coordinating damage repair teams mm -hmm. and you are also both studying a certain bit of information regarding that hypernova. So feel free to sprinkle in details as you wish. Uh, Jana, how are the repairs going in engineering? Uh, well, Commander, they're progressing quite slowly. Uh, it doesn't look like the warp core's uh, matter-antimatter integrity field is going to be, uh, well, any further disrupted, but uh, nonetheless, it's slow going. Yeah. Um, my main concern, of course, is that dilithium crystal. Hopefully we can... Hopefully it doesn't fully crack. Well, we could attempt to reconstitute it, but uh, right now we're just doing everything we can to hold the ship together and make sure it doesn't like split apart. So we'll get around to it eventually. And hopefully, well, that distress signal we sent out will bring somebody to our aid. Well, I don't know about that. The, uh, not to sound too, too gloomy, but um, looks, I've been able to map back the, the shockwave um, to that hypergiant, which traject the trajectory of which seemed to, have come from uh, a black hole that did not apparently show up on surveys of the area previously. Uh, give me one second and he'll double check the sensor logs from the shuttlecraft that have been routed to the console. Uh, mm -hmm. You're right. And the this apparent black hole seems to be diminishing as we're speaking. Yeah, I didn't think that they did that. Well, you're right. They, they don't. Um, that's that's impossible. It this almost seems artificial. Kind of, yeah, I was about to say exactly the same thing, except the, the inverse, that this doesn't seem to be a natural phenomenon at all. So great minds think alike, just coming at problems from different angles, which is kind of like us, because you're security and I'm engineering. We're both in gold uniforms. But, you know, nice, nice little... One crew. Confluence. Yeah. There, yes, exactly. One crew. Um, do you think we should send out another shuttlecraft to investigate this? Because... If it disappears, we might not ever find the cause of this bizarre stellar phenomenon. Well, um, GM, how far away is this? Let me put it to you this way. If you were to send out a shuttle, it would have to go at its maximum of warp five to get to the black hole in time to scan it. So you're looking at at least a few hours, if not half a day's travel. Okay. And how far is Vedas Prime? From where you are currently, you are still a days out at warp eight. Uh, at warp five, quick head math, I think that's what, two and a half days? Okay. Um, honestly, and you could probably tell me this a little more accurately, Jana, but I'm not sure that we'd be able to even get there with before it closes Look at the rate that it's shrinking you're right its rate of contraction does appear to suggest that we wouldn't be able to make it using a shuttlecraft nonetheless i i can't help but make the suggestion uh, who knows this kind of phenomenon might occur again that's true are you picking up anything on long-range sensors for betas prime i have a feeling that they were much closer to the shockwave I haven't been able to determine anything in that regard. Um, all right, I'll run some scans. All right, and I will, I guess, attempt to reconstitute the dilithium crystal so that we can actually get somewhere in time. All right. Sounds good. So, Stetko, you doing those scans, uh, I would like you to roll me a reason and a science, a difficulty of three. The shuttle will assist you with a, a nine or lower. And remember, you do have two momentum at the moment. I'll roll three dice and spend a momentum. When right. you said the shuttle assist, what's the shuttle rolling? Uh, it is rolling uh, just a nine or lower, so a d20 nine or lower. Oh, okay. Because I don't think I have a shuttle sheet in there. 
Well, there is one for the Valkyrie Mark III. Yeah, yeah, it's the stats are completely different, unfortunately. Okay. So I've made one, a note to put them in for next week, though. This is uh, it's not a challenge dice. This is one D twenty. No, it's just a D twenty. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oops, I keep pushing buttons because I'm not seeing any results. My bad. No, uh, I don't want to see that result. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was hmm. a nat 20. My bad. Shuttle explodes. No, it's nothing that severe. <laughs> Finally. All right, I think I know what I want to have happen. So, Stetco, this is going to succeed at cost, meaning that I'm just going to get a bunch of threat for this. But you do get some information from Vadis Prime. Okay. And I'm going to give you access to that handout, which you may wish to share with Kijwick at your earliest convenience. And while she's reading, uh, I'm just going to say a little bit to the stream. So, hey, thanks, thanks everybody for the bits. Uh, really appreciate it. Every little bit helps. <laughs> hey, there you go. Also, Watney, when you get a chance, uh, toggle your video so you're in the right place. What did I do? Was that no, no, it was uh, it was a certain uh, medical officer. Yeah, that, uh... I just I just dropped. We had a little. Are we good now? Here. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. So Stetco would have gone offline and run these long range scans with what power was available. Mm -hmm. She'll enter the captain's ready room. Well, he's on the shuttle right now. Oh, he's on the shuttle. Okay. Yes. Um, is he alone? Yeah, unless he brought someone with him. Okay. Stetco to captain. Ishwick, go ahead. Sir, I've run some long range scans to check on Vedas Prime given their proximity to the blast. Looks like things are not good. Um, the blast stripped away all of their ozone. So within a short amount of time, they, they will experience a total biome collapse. Um, Looks like we we might be able to, uh, and Dr. Dottig might be able to help more with the rest of the details of this, but we might be able to source um, a loss for that, or uh, source that ozone that's been lost from a nearby planet, uh, Vetus 9. Anyway, there's... Even there's 2 billion people on the planet, sir. So we have to find some way to sustain them before their suit suits power runs out. GM, is there yes. any, uh, is there any hit back on the emergency SOS that we sent out? I'm gonna roll a challenge die. If I roll an effect, yes. There has not been. Okay. And as far as I know, the how only has thrusters. Correct. So we're about 8,000 years away from Vedas Prime. Correct. <clears throat> but I would point out you have at least two working shuttles. <sighs> two working shuttles oh, that boy. can they restore the entire ozone to an L-class planet? Well, if you ask uh, for Dottig to fill you in, or if uh, Stetco sends you the information, I can show you that handout as well. Uh, Stetco, forward to me all of the sensor data. I will work with Jana to see if we can spare hands to get a second shovel uh, en route. Hi, sir. Right. Jana and Dag, you both have access to uh, damage to Vatis Prime. Kiswick to Jana. Uh, yes, Captain. I just forwarded you the latest sensor readings on Vetus Prime. Turns out the hypernova has stripped the atmosphere, leaving two billion uh, to slowly wait for their support suits to run out of life support before they die. Um, given that the HAL only has thrusters, 
is it possible to use the shuttles in a way to lend support to collect the necessary materials to reconstitute their ozone from Vetus 9? Well, Captain, we'd have to completely redesign the, uh, the impulse intake manifolds, but it might be possible uh, if we had two shuttlecraft. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I'd much rather have a, a full contingent of starships to attempt something on a planetary scale, but we might be the only hope that all these billions of people have to survive. We have to at least try, at least in, in my opinion, not that I want to tell you how to do your job, Captain, just well, as you our, tell me to do mine, but... Mm. Our SOS hasn't been responded to. We're the only ship in the area, and right now we don't seem to be in a tremendous amount of danger. Sparing a shuttlecraft or two will allow us to uh, help the Vetus while we stay back on the how. Now, one thing I would point out as the Game Master that hasn't been mentioned yet, the planet you would have to get the water from to turn into ozone, it's got intelligent life. Not sentient life, but intelligent life. Meaning like, you know, squid and whales, and things like that. Oh, the handout said a Europa-like planet with non-intelligent life. Oh, well, that's what I, well, it should say non-sentient is what it should say. <laughs> oh, okay. Not sapient. <laughs> Oof. Would uh, the procedure that we would follow through in order to actually uh, affect the rescue of uh, the Vedas' planet mm -hmm. endanger the life forms? Depends on how much of their water you take. Then you're going to need a lot of it. I would also say as Game Master that Jana, I mean, your engineering, engineering team is great. Like Dorset's great. You know, Martinez is great. There's really only one other engineer you know that could work with you to get this kind of shuttle modification done in time. And he's currently sitting in sickbay about to get his leg chopped off. Of course, you don't know that last bit, but... Uh, give me one moment, uh, Captain. I I'm going to need to... Well, I, I need a consultation. Um, and he will tap his comm badge. Um, Dr. Dottig, how is... Uh... How is Jaro doing? Well, he's uh, sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Uh, we may have to amputate his leg. Oh. Um, okay. Um, so, what uh, you, so what you said, Doc, is I'm not, I'm not going to be dancing anytime soon. I got no, that. You won't be, uh, no, you won't be winning any tango contests for a little while if we do this. Um, uh, look, Doc. Um, okay, uh, I, I need him. I was about to say back on his feet, uh, but that, that would be really insensitive. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I, 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 I need his. I need his. Well, brain. Oh, hey, is that is that John? Yeah. Hey, hey. I'm, glad, I'm glad you made it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you made it too. Buddy, I, I'm sorry to hear about the bad news. That's, that's, yeah. Hey, he won't, he won't let me keep it. I, I was given to understand that you couldn't keep it. If he cuts it off, I can always wrap it in like, like Lexan. I was going to give it to you as a scratching post. Okay, I, I'm going to let that, that, kind of racist comment pass by without you know any uh, objection because you 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 sound like more drunk than you've ever been so uh d doctor um I, I need him actually capable of performing his duties yes um i'm aware i can give him something to clear his head um but that doesn't alleviate our immediate concern That's that's your area. Look, I, I know what he can do when it comes to maintenance and modifications on a shuttle. Getting him actually physically capable of doing that, that's on you, Doctor. So do your job. I'll do mine. Oh, oh, right. oh he told you. Oh, yeah, that's my buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, prior to your call, I had medically ordered him to be relieved of all duty until further notice. 
I'm going to try something. I can't guarantee its result, but if it works, I may be able to get him back to you. Uh, thank you, Doctor. I can't stress how important this is. Billions of lives hanging in the balance. Billions uh, of lives hanging in the balance, yes. But the one on my operating table is the one that I care about. Well, Doctor, I feel the same way. So stand by and help him. All right. So, GM, I have an idea. We may be able to uh, sort of combine a little frontier medicine mm -hmm. um, with this. So basically what I need is an osteogenic stimulator, which I'm uh, given to believe that either has been damaged or I don't have one um, aboard the how. Let me ask this, though. Do you have field medicine as a talent? I do. Then you I don't have, need one. You can improvise. Yeah, I've got a couple. I've got uh, field medicine and field medical. Though field medic is specifically for combat-related healing. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I was actually thinking if I could use field medicine, could I sort of modify a dermal regenerator to an osteogenic regenerator? You could. And attempt to just mend his leg enough so that it won't fall off if he stands up. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say yes, but we are going to actually roll for it. Okay. So this is uh, definitely not by the book. So let's call this a daring and a medicine. Uh, I have all this threat, but I'm not going to reset threat at the end because this threat's going to carry over to the next part. So I'm going to say difficulty of four on this one. Okay. But if you succeed, uh, Terrell will be able to walk around a little bit. Probably should still give him a cane of some sort. And he definitely doesn't want to be lifting anything heavy. All right. I think you've already used your determination, right? I have. Might I suggest that you, I, I don't know, GM, if you'd be uh, able to uh, allow Jana to assist in this, considering that it is a modification of a fundamentally a, a kind of engineering device? Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I'll give you a presence in engineering, Jana. You may assist with that. Um, and sorry, uh, GM, I, I missed what I was rolling. Uh, daring in a medicine. Daring medicine. Okay, I can. I can do that, and I'm going to spend that momentum to get an extra die. Mm -hmm. Um, can my surgery focus apply to this? It's technically it the end result will be. Um, and you know what, if you're carrying over threat, go ahead and take two more because I'm going to roll additional two dice. Alrighty. All right. No way. Right, well, hey, John, I got you one. Very nice. That is a grand total of six successes, which means you get two momentum. So yeah, with Jana talking over the, uh, comms with you, Dottig, you basically jury rig, uh, a bone regenerator and, uh, Terrell, I mean, your leg still hurts, don't get me wrong, but you feel like you could actually put weight on it without it, like, snapping off kind of a thing. All right, now this is very, very important. All right. No lifting heavy objects. No stamping or rhythmic tapping of the foot. No stairs. No Jeffrey's tubes. And you have to use this cane. At least till we can get you back to DSO, and at which point I can make it good as new. You're muted. Yep, John, you're muted, as usual. <laughs> All right, yeah, where am I going? Well, uh, I'm going to give him a, a shot of whatever, you know, Cordrazine, whatever would help, help him to shake off that... Uh, that uh, grogginess and uh dot is actually going to help him to engineering oh god it hurts again yes, so now well, blame uh, jana for this okay. uh, i was just telling him to blame jana for this ah gotcha sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no um no. but uh i think now we need to cut back to kijwick him you know sort of alone in that shuttle as uh, you sort of wonder, I mean, you had a few questions for me, uh, Dag, so let's actually talk about those on screen. 
Um, all right, so Terrell is not there. But yeah, Kiswick, as you're sitting in the shuttle, tell me a little bit about your thought process here. Computer, scan for any non-Federation vessels, stations, or signatures in the area that might be able to respond to a general SOS. The computer works for a moment and returns. There is an Undine bioship approximately two <clears throat> light years distant. It belongs to the groundskeeper's fashion. Faction, sorry. Can we, can we open a channel? Channel open. Undine Vessel, this is Captain Kiswick of the USS Howe. We have sustained a catastrophic collision. And uh, while we require assistance, the Vedas homeworld is in severe need of restoring their ozone after a hypernova event. Over. John? You know who's talking. Oh, no. Oh, hey! Uh, wow. Um, what, what, what are you from again? This is Captain Kiswick of the Federation Starship Howe. Oh. Wow, that's, that's an old ship. Yes. Um, regarding my plea, do you think you can provide assistance to the Vedas? Uh, Vedas, Vedas. Um, yeah, 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 we can, we can do that. And since he's not here, you just sort of hear in the background, hey, buddy, uh, buddy, buddy, what are we doing, buddy? Who, who's on the comms? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going, we're going to go help some Federation people. I mean, that, that's great and all, buddy, but I mean, have, have you told him who we are or are we just sort of going there without, you know? What, what should I say? Well, tell him where who you are and what ship you are oh yeah we're, we're on the troust and 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 your name for him oh, my, my name for him oh no no well, no 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 tell him your name your name no <laughs> oh i'm tabaris um and my buddy here is rez we're co-captains of the troust co-captain tabaris of the troust yeah, uh, yeah, pleasure to make your acquaintance. Please, uh, if, well, if, we're, we're already on the way. We're just a chat excellent. now. Excellent. Um, it, it seems that. So, uh, it, so do you have do you have any like good hollow novels of David Hasselhoff? I am unfamiliar with that particular bullion, but I'm sure if a trade needs to be done, we can do this. Oh, that would be great! Like classic 80s television it's like one of my favorite i'm unfamiliar with 2280s no culture. 1980s the human 1980s oh yeah i have a night rider lunchbox i can't wait i can't wait to get some like actual films I, i'm sure arrangements can be made um but right now it is imperative that the vedas receive uh some assistance to restore their ozone yeah i can i can fly and talk i got i got i got this down unfortunately i i do not have much time i need to get back to coordinating repairs to my ship as it is adrift oh sorry to hear that um well i'll, I'll send out a message to see if anybody can uh, come out there and help you uh, that is very much appreciated um it, if we make it when we make it back, uh, look up Deep Space October, and uh, I'll be able to hand off those uh, bully and hollow novels you asked about. That's awesome. All right. Well, have fun. Good luck. Kiswick out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Tabris out. And, uh, of course, Kiswick. I, and feel free to correct me, but I imagine this entire time you've been looking up the Troust on your database, and you just see a very long list of, shall we say, esoteric missions involving um, some interesting solutions to problems. Um, but probably the biggest takeaway is that while the Troust is capable of helping, 
you still need to have some people from the how get out there. Like it's one of those things where you still probably need to modify a shuttle and send it to go help kind of a thing. Kishwick to Jana. Uh, yes, Captain. I was able to contact a groundskeeper vessel. They're going to be lending some assistance to the Vetus. Hopefully that will give us time to retrofit uh, the other shuttle as you need. Uh, but it dawns on me that what, what are we doing to reconstitute the dilithium on the how? Uh, well, Captain, I've devoted most of my attention to retrofitting the shuttle, given that was your most recent order. Uh, I mean, we could draw from some of the particulate and background energy uh, or uh, radiation emissions from the storm itself that passed us by and try to use those as, uh, well, a kind of amplifying process to reconstitute the lithium, but that would take time. I, I don't know if I could really Who do on your team that. would you trust to do that? I wouldn't really trust myself to do that, sir. That's a very dangerous process. But of all of my staff, I suppose that Mr. Dorset would probably be best equipped for that. Okay. Brief Mr. Dorset, focus your efforts on the shuttle afterwards and disembark at your leisure. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, are yes. you not joining us? I'm going to continue to monitor efforts you know, on the how until the last minute. Uh, very good, sir. If you have right. any problems, call me. Kish work out. So we are sort of coming up on that two hour mark. So I think what we'll do is we'll stop here and we'll talk offline or maybe we'll just do it on stream here. Um, so what we need to do is, and this is probably going to be like over the week, um, what we need to do is we need to A, we need to come up with a design for the shuttle because I know players love customizing shuttles. I'm not even being sarcastic. Like people love doing that. Um, so we need to figure out how we're customizing the shuttle. You guys are basically making a specialized Delta flyer so you can make it whatever design you want. Uh, so you got to be thinking about that. Uh, no, you can't make it defiant. You don't have enough pieces. Uh, let's see what else. Um, in terms of who goes on the away mission... Um, I think it makes sense for Stetco to go. I think it makes sense for Dotted to go. And then, John, I'm going to let you decide whether Terrell goes or if you're just going to role play a uh, certain Undine the entire time. Because they're definitely going to be helping. Uh, all right. Um, and then, Dag, we'll figure out either a supporting character for you or someone we can... Um, you know, give you something to do. And I think that's everybody. I don't think I left anybody out. Um, yeah, John is going to. So yeah, I didn't leave anybody out. Um, okay, so next thing we need to talk about is next week. Um, is everybody available for the 29th? Confirmed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, so uh, this is where I'm going to end the YouTube recording. So YouTube, thank you so much for listening in and uh, see you later, YouTube.